Welcome, Wargamers, to another Warhammer Underworlds lore video, exploring the story behind those warbands trapped in the internal treasure trove and prison that is the city of Shadespire. And today, we're focusing actually on the most requested warband from the last video, and that is Zarbag's Gits. In the full game of Age of Sigmar, Zarbag and his Gits belong to a faction collectively known as the Gloomspite Gits. It's kind of an amalgamation of goblins or grots. Uh, these are cave dwelling creatures and massive trolls or trogoths. They are a fun, crazy bunch of lunatics replete with antics, hordes, and dark humor. And they really are a fun faction to learn about, and I'll leave a link down below to uh, the full lore week that I did regarding Gloom Spike Gits as a whole, if it interests you. Now, to illustrate the kind of random crazy nature of the faction, I want to read the lore entry about Zarbag's Gits that you find in the official Gloom Spike Gits battle tone. This is in the faction's timeline. It doesn't have an exact date, but it starts off with the title Zarbag's Quest. Zarbag the Shaman finds his way into the Night Vault beneath the cursed city of Shadespire. Or perhaps he woke up there. Or perhaps he's always been there. Zarbag, for one, has no idea. His gits are none the wiser. Grotz, not being much uh, given to complex philosophical musings, Zarbag and his lads instead have a grand old time wandering the echoing halls and vaults, nicking whatever they feel like and stabbing anyone who crosses their path. And that's it. That's all of the uh, actual lore for this warband. So they obviously don't have this big elaborate backstory or connection to the city like the Chosen Axes did. But I feel like that little blurb, that little story, does just as much to represent the nature of the Gloom Spike Gits as the Chosen Axe story represents Fire Slayers as a whole. So since there's such little information about the specific, the specific grots themselves, I instead wanted to focus on the characters that they represent. As a super brief background on the faction as a whole, the Gloomspite Gits are a collective of cave-dwelling species, all evolving in ways to kind of match their environment the best they can. The Moon Clan Grots uh, swell into huge numbers, right? And that's, that's their most dominant sub-faction, uh, has the most numbers, all the leaders are generally speaking a part of that. Next to the Moon Clan Grots are the Spider Fang, and they're not represented whatsoever with the Shadespire Warband, sadly. But these are Grots that revere spiders as a representation of their deity, and again, adapting to their environment just as spiders do in the gloomy, dank caves. And last up are the Trogoths, dumb, lumbering creatures of raw, physical might. And while they're not represented in Zarbag's Gits at all, um, Malog, the Trogoth, uh, is is part of Gloomspite Gits, and so we'll be covering him in his own dedicated lore video. And the Gloomspite Gits are super interesting, because while the wars of good and evil rage on the surface, uh, Zarbag's Gits and the faction he belongs to reside under all of that in the deepest depths of the realm, nearly unaware of what's going on around them. They have adapted their environment in many cool ways, uh, by using cave fungus for everything from food to medicine to poison and incorporating other cave dwelling species into their society. We'll talk about the big one soon. And an important note uh, to make about the Gloom Spike Gits is called the Bad Moon. Think of it as a moon that has no actual orbit. It just kind of appears in various places around the realm and it's integral to their religious lore and their war efforts because when the bad moon hovers over your area, things go horribly wrong for everyone who's not a, git, or a grot. The sky darkens, the moon looks like it has this malevolent grinning face looking at you, uh, fungal growths burst from every organic surface, and it can just straight consume people or animals instantly, and madness, paranoia sweep across the region, but it's not unfounded, because when the bad moon comes to your area, the gloom spike gets, all the faction that makes up Zarbags gets come out to play. The ground will begin to rumble. You'll see thousands of beady red eyes. Uh, you'll hear hoots and howls echoing through the woods. And this entire civilization that's been under your ground without you even knowing about it pours forth in a terrifying tidal wave of gleeful murder. They are this really strange faction that combines like whimsy and quirkiness with a lot of physical comedy because of their size, but also like truly creepy, terrifying stuff. And the best thing I can do to describe them I can think of as like this gleeful malice. 
which is super entertaining. Just don't think too hard on it because it gets a little unsettling when you think about the hordes all clawing and scraping at you and cackling and there's some body horror in the uh, battle tome as well. So that is a super brief overview of the Gloom Spite Gets. I go into a lot more detail in the lore series, so check it out down below if you would. But let's zoom in from the army as a whole and check out uh, the actual units that are represented by this particular warband, right? You're giving a, a very specific set of units in Zarbag's Gets. Let's talk about those. Zarbag himself, we're gonna start there and the most kind of best equation you can make for him is that he represents a madcap shaman. This is sort of a low-level hero in the Greater Gloom Spike Gets army, and not incredibly uncommon. And it's basically the same tiny, little capricious little grot as others, but somehow they've been touched in such a way that they are able to wield magic. And for a species that's prone to displays of power and arrogance, they think an awful lot of themselves, and they try to muscle their way into positions of power, because I can strike lightning on you, and you know, I mean, they just kind of bully everyone around them. If true like leadership and organization can exist for such a crazy you know bunch of little maniac people, uh, this is probably the closest thing to a leader they would have within Zarbag's Gets. But again, he doesn't have any of those traditional hero traits, right? There's no might or honor or respect, just the ability to bully everyone around you. And those that have an edge, in this case magic, are just better at bullying and they rise to the top until they hit some other one else that they can't bully, that they're not more powerful than. Now, one thing you might see referenced here and there in the Zarbags Gets cards are mushrooms, a fungus to be uh, precise, and fungus plays a prominent theme across Gloom Spike Gets. Shaman in particular find them useful for getting a little edge over their competition. Basically, they take these things called madcap mushrooms and it's like putting nitro into an engine. It maximizes their magic abilities, gives them all kinds of visions and hallucinations, oh, gives them all kinds of visions and hallucinations, that kind of stuff. And it is possible that maybe Zarbag took some of those mushrooms to power himself up and then in that kind of stupor, right, when he was coming down off of that high, all of a sudden woke up in Nightfall with no memory of how he got there. And since they're not particularly hard thinkers, uh, that was just fine with him. But those same kind of antics happen across a species-wide thing, where they're just kind of getting themselves supercharged, they do something crazy, and if they live, they're like, what happened? What, where, where did everybody go? Kind of thing. Now, stepping back to talk about the units that make up the bulk of this warband, right? And really the bulk of the entire Gloom Spite Gets army. We're talking about the basic grot. And here's the thing, a lot of the units within Gloom Spike Gets, and of course this warband, are the same kind of character, right? The grot or goblin. Um, armed with a different weapon. And so I'm gonna kind of bunch them all together, but really this whole section represents uh, Stick It, Red Cap, Dibs, um, Prog, Donetta, and Snurk, Sour Tongue. Standing at about half the height of a normal human, they are tiny, frail, and physically weak. Now, to complement those terrible qualities, they also have uh, terrible in inner qualities, right? They are greedy, malicious, always grinning and leering with dark amusement, and extremely cowardly. So what makes them scary? Well, the simple answer is numbers. Sheer numbers. It's easy to deflect one spear. A thousand is much harder to deal with. And as we mentioned before, part of their threat is psychological in nature. The ground floods over with red eyes, evil grins, and cackling laughs. It's meant to incite fear before the lines ever meet. Combined with the bad moon overhead, and it seems like your world is ending. From your perspective, the world is ending, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And they wield a variety of weapons, and a few of them are more common than others, right? A lot of these are kind of like cobbled together things or remnants from other people's fights. Uh, but we'll go over the basic ones. Uh, of course, there is the, the really simple bow and arrow. These are just usually called shooters. And they're able to snipe out uh, enemies from long range. They're not really great shots because they don't have the strong arms to pull the bow back super far. Uh, but they do, you know, again, numbers. When you throw enough arrows at something, one of them will eventually land and hit something important. These stabas are made up with spears or swords, anything they kind of find. It's not represented in this warband whatsoever, but it's a very common weapon. Next up is the net, and I love the net. The reason I say this is because when you think about this faction, uh, the net really, to me, embodies how it's supposed to work in the lore. And by that I mean, 
you get a bunch of these super weak, cowardly losers. And what they, when they look at armies of big guys, you know, big by human standards, they don't have to, you know, um, swing above their weight class. What they could do is bring you down to their level, right? What, what is being good going to get you if all of a sudden you're trapped in a net and there's just a thousand little grots just pouring over you like a flood? So it's that idea of like debuffing your opponent to the point where they come down to your level. You are both weak, but now you're comfortable and you got some buddies with you and you're going to take them out. I love this that idea and how that plays into the army. Now the last kind of weapon option that we frequently see and is represented in this warband is the cannonball on a chain, also known as a fanatic. And um, what these do is they basically take one of their number and they pump them full of mushrooms. Remember I said they use mushrooms for medicinal purposes and poisons and all that kind of stuff? Well, they made this very special brew that puts someone into like this hallucinogenic trance where they just go like super saiyan. They just go all out screaming, wailing, and they strap a cannonball to him and then just let him go, right? They just kind of throw him out in the front and they just start spinning around in circles with this thing and become little suicide traps but they're just whirling death just spinning around in circles going nuts and i absolutely love that again they're using their environment the fungus to make someone who can fight above their weight class at the same time the netter is there next to them bringing the enemies down low so it's this kind of two-way go where they get stronger your enemies get weaker and you use what you have which is a lot of numbers soup them up and get them out there now most of the time uh to be honest Almost, almost always, the person who's strapped to that cannonball, the fanatic themselves, they never live. It's a one-time ride, but it's a really good ride. All of a sudden, you've spent your whole life being weak and feeble, and now you have like the strength of a god, and you are death incarnate. Uh, most people, or most of the grots, I would say, uh, would definitely take that opportunity. So it's a really funny thing. And I'll move on to the last kind of section of this warband, and that's talking all about squigs. Now, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. There's a squig herder named Drizgit the Squig Herder. He really is just a grot there meant to keep the rest of the squigs in line. But you might be asking, hey Doug, what's a squig? Well, um, certainly one of the coolest parts of the warband and the faction as a whole is the inclusion of this creature. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, the Gits live in the deepest caves in like these subterranean lairs. And they're pretty, you know, quote unquote, one with nature, I guess you could say. And they live off various fungus and resources out there. And they interact with the naturally occurring beasts of that environment. The most common of which are those cave dwelling creatures known as the squig. They are a source of food, a steed to be used as cavalry. They can grow to colossal size, towering over any grot or trogoth. But for the most part, they are herded and, you know, I say quote unquote tamed, right? Tamed is a strong word when it comes to these bees. They're just hyper aggressive, predatory, uh, but they have their purposes in git society. Now, in addition to that kind of indetermined growth, they can also be bred to suit any need. They can be bred for size, hunger, ability to hunt, and not just hunt your enemy, but hunt, hunt resources, basically, and also be used as beasts of burden. And so, while being locked away in the depths uh, with such a creature, that, that's actually been awesome for the Gits, because it's given them time to perfect the various breeds and uses for them. The squigs you see in this warband are kind of the, the, the basic typical one, and that's represented by Bonecracker and Gobbleook, the squigs. They are herded into battle by that squig herder, and they're used as an aggressive assault wave to support the shooters in the back. Basically, you just bring a bunch of these wild, feral animals that just want to kill, maim, and eat, and you just open the gates, pointing them directly at the enemy, and they will just take care of the rest. They'll just bolt forward at full speed uh, and just rush the enemy with the raw, like, just the chomping power of their mouths, right? Just going nuts. And while you're trying to defend yourself from that kind of forward aggression, there's gonna be a bunch of arrows raining down on you. So the squigs run at you like rabid dogs, and when you're pinned down, the gits come in and clean up afterwards. So squigs are some of the most fun creatures in the AOS universe. Like I said, please go see my lore video. The, the way that they use cave fungus and that kind of stuff to manipulate and breed these things, they're really quite humorous if you just want a good chuckle. But in fact, Gloomspite gets the army 
that Zarbags gets derives from is one of the most entertaining in the game as well. Lots of crazy, zany rules, and I think the basic idea that I can tell someone if they were interested in the faction is you won't always win, but you will always smile. There's just weird stuff happens. They have funny rules that hurt you and hurt your opponent as well, and it's a lot of fun. And that, my friends, is all that I have to share about Zarbags Gits. I'll say it one more time, in the link down below there is my entire series about uh, Gloomspite Gits, the faction they derive from. Go check it out, it's a lot of fun, entertaining to listen to while you paint or do some deck building. Let me know in the comments down below what faction you would like to be, uh, you know, have a lore video done about them next. But thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you in my next Warhammer Underworlds lore video.